Alright, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is Monday the 10th of July, and if you're a geek for this kind of stuff like I am, and I'd imagine most of you are since you're watching the video, today was pretty damn interesting. So a quick look at the board. You got Google down 2.5%, Amazon down 2%. Tesla down 1.7, Microsoft down 1.6, and Apple down 1%. So typically, if all your big tech names are catching a spanking, you'd kind of think QQQ might catch a spanking as well. Not the case, though, today. QQQ actually finishes flat, ever so slightly green. So today, guys, you're seeing the impact of that SPX rebalance, or the, uh, the NDX rebalance, rather. So we talked about this in last night's video. NASDAQ 100 going to have a special rebalance to be effective July 24th. And it would appear they're wasting no time getting that rebalancing done. So pretty much, guys, here's what's happening. So here's all your top holdings for the QQQ. These seven names, Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Amazon, Tesla, Meta, and Google, they make up a combined 50% of the QQQ. Seven names, very much heavily weighted. Those are the seven names that took a bit of a beating today. QQQ still finishes today flat. So typically when you think of rotation, you think of rotation, you know, they'll take money out of technology, and they'll rotate that cash over to energy. Or they'll rotate money out of technology, and they'll rotate it into something like the small caps. What you're seeing today, and this might continue for, I mean, that's kind of the million dollar question. I'm not too sure when this comes to an end. But what you're seeing here today is pretty much just uh, rotation within the index. Selling Microsoft, selling Apple, selling NVIDIA, Amazon, Tesla, Google, Meta, and they're buying the little guys. All right, that's your rebalancing. Sell Amazon. Buy some Adobe. Sell Apple. Buy a little Broadcom. And that kind of rotation within the index is what caused the QQQ to be flat today, despite a couple of the big boys taking a thumping. So names like Adobe. Adobe's up about 2.5% today. Good looking daily squeeze. Um, Broadcom had a pretty good day. And then if you jump over to the S&Ps here, Despite those heavily weighted names getting sold off, S&Ps hold up pretty good today. And a big part of that was a little bit more rotation over into these small caps. Got your IWM up a cool 1.7%. So in plain English, guys, you're seeing four selling in your big tech names. And some of that cash is going over to your smaller tech names. right? In an effort to rebalance the, uh, the index kind of reshuffle the weighting. So as far as the uh, the impact here on the market, as of today, the S&Ps kind of seem unfazed. Now, typically, you'd kind of think, all right, if Amazon, Google, Tesla, Microsoft are getting sold off, and in the event that forced selling continues, you would typically think it's going to put some pressure on the S&Ps. All right, the rotation game is what can keep the ship alive, or uh, keep the ship afloat. So like I mentioned, today's rotation was into the small caps, and I think as far as a few things to watch here over the next few days, um, the S&Ps don't look bad. If anything, they look really good. Your weekly chart looks good. Your daily chart looks good. We do have a sell signal here on the hourly chart. They got a pretty good pump there into the close. If I'm bullish... <coughs> excuse me. If um, You guys almost lost me there. If I'm bullish on the market for the next few days... I want to see the S&Ps rip back above the hourly 21 and cancel out the hourly sell signal. With everything going on over there in big tech, to the extent that continues for a few more days, if the S&Ps are just hanging out here in no man's land under the 21 with the sell signal, in most markets, and obviously we're not in most markets, but in most markets, you're hanging out under your 21 with the sell signal, that usually gets resolved in the form of a decent flush. Now, if technology, um, if the big boys can kind of catch a bid here the next few days, Amazon wakes up, Google wakes up, Microsoft wakes up, that should help the S&P keep the uh, 
keep the ship afloat. But what I would look for here, today the hero was the small caps. Tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, if the small caps begin to pull back, and you don't see Google, Amazon, Tesla, Microsoft catch a bid, then I think you'll see the S&Ps crack a little bit lower. If big tech names are going down, and you're not getting any strong rotation like you got today, you know, at that point, there's uh, there's nothing to keep the ship afloat. The ship is either floating or the uh, the ship is sinking. So a few things to watch there. And then keep in mind, you have your CPI report on Wednesday morning. That can always shake the tree. And then next week kicks off your uh, your big tech earnings. So what I'm preaching here, my friends, is uh, is a little bit of patience. There might be that temptation there because Google's been so strong and Amazon and Tesla and Microsoft and Apple have been so strong. There might be the temptation to want to immediately buy the dip. I would urge you to be a little bit cautious. I do think eventually Apple, Google, Microsoft, they should all shape up again. But if we continue to see that for selling, you don't want to fight that. All right, and I say that uh, I say that with love. All of you watching right now, me included, we don't have deep enough pockets to move the market. So if they got to continue to sell Amazon, they got to continue to sell Apple, and we come jumping in here buying calls, if the force selling continues, we're going to get trampled. So my advice, guys, is wait for the... Uh, mark up a few levels where you would like to buy something. And let's just use Apple as an example. This uh, this rebalancing selling might be a great buying opportunity. I can't jump in and actually take action on that buying opportunity until the setup fits the template. And we talked about that in last night's video as well. Where I'm looking for my entries is when you have that multi time frame alignment. So you take a name like Apple, you're in uh, you're in an uptrend. You have a daily buy signal. You've pulled back to the 21 EMA which I think for a lot of us is usually the buy zone. Everything looks bullish there on that daily chart. What you need to actually trigger that move back to the upside is that alignment from the ground up. In other words, your structure, your momentum, your signals on a 5-minute, a 15-minute, a 30-minute, they're going to trigger the reversal. Those lower time frame buy signals, they're going to bring the selling pressure to an end. They're going to help Apple turn the corner. So long as you have a one hour and a 30 minute sell signal, they got to clean up that problem. Don't assume because it's been so strong, because we're in an uptrend, because it's big bad Apple, don't assume that the, uh, the selling here is going to be short lived. It might be short lived, but my advice is always, guys, is get long when as many time frames as possible are confirming that everything is ready for that push higher. When I look at Apple with a 1 hour and a 30 minute sell signal, I'm not getting the gist it's time to jump in and get long just yet. When I look at Google, and Google's kind of a sketch ball here. Um, Google looks pretty rough. That 4 hour, 2 hour, 1 hour, 30 minute sell signal, to me is a pretty big indication. Google probably not gearing up for a huge rip just yet. Um. Microsoft, two hour, one hour, 30 minute sell signal under the 21 EMA. Apple, one hour in the 30 minute. Um, who else here? Tesla. Tesla has a 30 minute sell signal. So again, point being, um, I've got no idea how long the rebalancing takes place. But so long as it takes place, I think we should expect more for selling. Don't uh, don't be a hero. Don't try to be the first guy or gal to buy the dip. Right? Don't uh, don't fight the powers that be. Let the fang stocks pull back. Let them find support where they find support, and then when things get that positive turn, your five minute goes bullish, the fifteen minute, the thirty minute. For those of you with the indicators, you know the template we're looking for. Right now, for all these big tech names, that template is missing. And so long as that template is missing, I'm going to be a good boy and be a little bit patient. But there you have it, guys. Short video for tonight. But since we talked about the uh, the rebalancing last night, 
figured I would jump back on the mic and give you a little bit of an update. So not too often you see Google, Amazon, Tesla, Microsoft all catching a whooping. And the QQQ somehow finishes to, uh, to eke out a little bit of a green day. Not too often you see that. But alright guys, have a good night. I got some... What's for dinner tonight? Pizza and pasta and meat sauce. I am getting my Italian on tonight. So y'all be good and I'll talk to you soon. Adios. Oh yeah, one last thing here. I do aim for transparency. And this probably goes without saying. <laughs> but I did take off my Microsoft tray today. Because that is not painting the picture I'm looking for. And we also took off our trade in Amazon. Too, uh, too many sell signals for me to want to mess around and find out. So take the trade when you have the multi-time frame alignment. It all looks a little bit like that. Be patient with that trade so long as you have that multi-time frame alignment. As soon as that alignment disappears, you got to disappear out of that position as well. All right, guys, have a good night.